Let's have it. How's it going, my man? How are you today? I'm doing great there, Raul. Hallelujah. Uh, so just another great blessed day that the Lord has made, and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah, you know, and that's, uh, when you say that, my friend, I think uh, the topic that we have today, uh, which was one you came up with, and when mm -hmm. you said it, I thought, oh, boy. <laughs> and the topic, <laughs> folks, is uh, Jacksonville. And, uh, you know, not, not the, the tourist sites in Jacksonville, of which I guess there are, are some nice ones, but uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the most recent infamy that it, uh, it, it uh, accomplished in the newspapers, I'm not sure how to say that, but of uh, three innocent folks being gunned down in a Dollar General. And that specific instance, um, when I when you put that topic forward, uh, and I started reading about more of the particulars, my heart sank. Um, you know, and it's just, uh, man, I, I want to hear your perspective on it first, because I, I know the things that have been mulling around in my heart. But uh, you know, let's get to it, right? Well, you know, of course, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, it's your heart goes out to the families and to those uh, that uh, actually were taken away by this action. But again, it goes back uh, to the very f fabric fiber of this country, you know, and, you know, and, it, and it's, it's sad, the, the act itself, but it's really, really bad. But it's uh, the thought process, the heart, the uh Everything that's underneath is what is still, uh, how do we say, is, is a gangrene, it's a, a festering, it's a, a rottenness that's just still existing and it's starting to show itself even more. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, I, we live in a great country now, don't get me wrong. However, uh, some of the characteristics of uh, some, I, I say some in all caps, uh, some people's thought process is uh, is just uh, wrong. Um, and whether in, in some instances you just can't justify it, you know, of course, um, is just no justification of it. And, uh, you know, when we're talking about the underlying thoughts, you know, country that, you know, just uh, maybe this is two, 2023, we're talking uh, even the 1970s and 80s under Reagan. Uh, we will not be a propagandist, communist, lying country. But here we are. You know, we're a country. Uh, we're this and that. All these kinds of things. But now we're starting to see uh, some hypocrisy with that, whereas law and order abides is set when it pertains to me. Yeah. You know, and, and, but Man. when it comes to what's happening in Jacksonville, you know, of course, uh, these things are targeted. And uh, people need to understand they're targeted and they're deliberate and they're coming from a, a, a different heart. And, and of course, you no, know, we hate to hear uh, that term white supremacy, but it is alive and well and active and it is getting even more evil steam. And what a lot of people don't really, really, truly white and black, white supremacy affects us all. You know, it just affects us differently. You know, of course, you know, with the uh, actions of white supremacy, it is designed to basically destroy the BIPOC community, black, indigenous people, color communities directly. But what it does to white people is it's a continuous pounding on the head to kind of collude. And of course, it's, it's trying to get more and more people to collude and to collaborate and to buy into this thing that the country is being stolen and taken to the point where their very humanity is being crushed. And then, of course, some people even say, well, uh, maybe it is some truth to the country being taken to us. No, being taken away from us. No, it is not. You know, and of course, that's uh, the purpose of uh, this podcast. Uh, of course, by the way, uh, Antoine Hallman Sr., Raul LaBresh, uh, frame of reference coming together. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. In Jacksonville uh, today. And uh, but these things, they're very hurtful. They, they hurt not just black people, but they hurt or people of color, but they hurt white people as well. And of course, and you see these uh, people that uh, perpetrate these uh, actions, they are getting younger and younger. Yeah. You know, meaning there's a, a radicalization uh, of the wrong sort. And, yeah. and, and again, it's just uh, 
that's why we have this podcast, just to hopefully invoke or provoke a thought of saying, hey, I just want to know the truth. I want to know what you're thinking, how you think, why you think that way. What can I do to dispel or even correct or give you some insight into that thing that you think? Mm-hmm. And that goes both ways. Mm-hmm. Hey, I would love to hear, you know, what a, and I, I know I hear what you say. And, and I'm very appreciative because, again, you and I have some uh, dead honest dialogue. And, and that is so appreciative. Uh, but it's we just need more people to understand that for the growth of the country and just for the survival of humility and humanity, uh, that we just need to come together. But overall, it's just... Uh, I, I, I'm trying not to go into a finger pointing, look at this group, this particular group of people, this party, this, et cetera. But I'll do that. Thing is, <laughs> this thing stems I'll... from one side. This is a yeah. one sided thing because we talk about Florida, right? Yeah. We talk about, uh, you know, Governor, uh, I don't want to say his name, yeah. just uh, 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 D. D. Lantas. You yeah. Know? But uh, but it's like uh, the, this thing, the, the very thing that he has uh, preached and perpetuated over the course of his uh, governorship, we see in it manifest. He manifested this stuff, you know. Of course, uh, the 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 minimizing of a uh, history or just the dilution of history and the misinterpretation, or the direct deliberate misinterpretation of history. I mean, you can you know when I say deliberate misinterpretation, meaning you can interpret a thing and then you can deliberately misinterpreted to get a res, uh, a desired impact or response and of course that is what is happening well it's like statistics right you can make statistics say just about anything you want um, you know exactly. you just you just have to control the dialogue control the narrative of the the stati- the, the, the the sample collection number one um, you know you can change your questions and you know frame your questions in a way that will lead people in a certain direction um, and that exactly that becomes, you know, just part of the equation of then deciding which part of that data that you get, you decide to really capitalize and focus on. I mean, there's a, there's a, a lot of, uh, you know, relatively insidious things going on in that process that people don't think about and they don't know how to answer. Right. Yeah. Cause uh, when you take away like, uh, okay. Uh, in, in college, in colleges in Florida, uh, uh, African Amer- AP African American studies are no longer go towards crit for college. Uh, your desired degree, right? Okay. What is that? What? What? Yeah. What? What is that intent? It will no longer be taught in high schools, but it'll no longer be taught as credit towards you no know, collegiate graduation. What is that? What is that trying to do? It it pers- it persuades you not to take because you're a person that's already on the fence, right? Well, it, like I'm not going to take a class that I don't get credit for it. Right. Give me anything or a, account for anything. So I won't take it. And so when you again, you start to take away, you start to strip the history clean and you start to put in stuff in its place. And then, like, again, like I said, in 30 years from now, if we're not careful, people will have a, a whole different uh, thought process towards a. Uh, BIPOC people. Right. Oh, they, uh, you know, they'd be like, a, oh, they are like. Ron Hubbard and they uh, came on spaceships or whatever the case may be, whatever they say. And, and it's, that's where we have to be very mindful and, and deliberate. You know, one of my hobbies, uh, well, I won't say a hobby, but it's like one of my things is uh, when a, a good book comes out or I come across an old book, I try to buy it. Because yeah. again, you know, like we're banned with the book bannings and all these different kind of things. I, even if I can't, it's just my I, like we were talking how our queue of books to read <laughs> is continuously growing. But it's like I buy the book because it because I, I I I believe that at some point it may one day not be available. Yeah. And then of course, uh, say the generations to come after me and my wife is like you want them to be able to have some account of what really was going on right well uh, things get shut down right it goes out of print you know and i mean what what i think about sometimes is with website websites and you know things like our podcast um you know if you start saying the wrong things too often and the wrong people find out about or the right people find out about it um it's really easy to turn it off 
it's really easy to mm -hmm. shut it down in search engines. It's really easy to just, mm -hmm. um, we had a thing with a place that I work at where um, Bing, somehow, I, I'm not sure exactly uh, you know, how they did this, but they changed one of the entries that uh, a, 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 a vendor of ours had a site for us that they shut down their site. So on their search engine, they said, we're permanently closed. So it's like wow. we are not permanently closed, um, but uh, you know if somebody used that search engine and looked for our company, they would see that we were permanently closed. Well, wow. you know if we were a mail order company, that would be much more devastating than being a retail bricks and you know b mortar kind of store. And but what was the intent behind that? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, oh, that was a mistake. Oh, we, we misinterpreted mm -hmm. or there was a problem in the programming. Um, you know, I mean, and, and you go back to the whole, you know, deal with the, the colleges in, Jack, in uh, Florida. You know, you take away the ability for that to work towards your degree credential, towards your credits in school. You're basically telling people it's a waste of your time and it's a waste of your money to take this. Yep. And, and guess what? That class isn't going to be offered for very long because the attendance, the, the enrollment and it's going to go down so far that when they're looking for things to cut, they're going to cut those courses because they're not bringing in the student numbers that they need to not only justify the class, but justify the department that's teaching that class. So it, it's more, it's just the same sort of thing. It's like saying this class, this, uh, this building, this, we're going, we're doing an out of business sale here for this class because we can't mm -hmm. survive anymore. You know, you, you could be a furniture store and and, you know, the people just aren't coming in the store anymore because they're buying their furniture from Ikea or whatever. Um, well, that that's going to change your whole, you know, we can't employ people anymore. We can't have as many salesmen as we can anymore. So even if they start coming in the door, we're not going to be able to service them. So you got to think about, I think about the mindset in that, you know, that says, okay, well, we won't attack directly. We'll just keep hitting on the flank and just, you know, the war of attrition where you just keep hitting mm -hmm. And yep. you keep hitting and you have the resources to keep bringing more and more soldiers into the equation. And as you bring those soldiers in, you just start eroding, 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 eroding until there are very few left that can put up a fight because the, you know, the, the true, the, the tried and true Christians, whatever, you know, the tried and true ecologists, the tried, you know, the tried and true climatologists will eventually be minimized to the point where they can become a fringe. And this mm -hmm. situation in, in uh, Jacksonville is even more terrifying to me as a white person because it brings up this whole scenario. He left, he left manifestos for his dad. He sent his dad a message saying, watch, you know, look at your computer. So he put him, he told his dad where to go to find the manifestos, you know, and then he does this whole thing of going to a black university and wanting to, you know, shoot people up there. Thankfully, a security guard sees him and, you know, confronts him and gets him to leave the university. But then there's video showing him putting on his bulletproof vest and, you know, getting himself gunned up. Yep. And then he went to found, find a location. And let's think about the location it's a dollar general for goodness sakes a dollar general so the three people that got killed the 57 year old you know woman that was there the 23 year old man and a 19 year old guy you know who's really a, still a kid at that level or at that age so they're just in a dollar general trying to get i mean i've been in dollar generals dollar stores whatever you know you go in there they, they, this isn't not, you know high end merchandise this is stuff that's priced at levels that the you know the the most economically challenged people can go to and at least get something you know they can they can get laundry detergent they can get some deals on clothing you know the and it comes in spurts you know it's not like you can necessarily guarantee you're going to get what you need but you just have to kind of keep going there and shopping and seeing oh yeah I do need some of this mm -hmm. and it'll be you know a third of the price that you would pay anywhere else um and that so here they are just doing that just just shopping for stuff for daily life and some guy comes in and picks off indiscriminately you know, the, the, I think, I mean, I, the only thing that seemed to be a criteria was it had to be a black person. So if you happen to be, you know, you know, Latinx or, you know, you happen to be a white person that was also looking for good deals on things, you probably were okay, you know, but just shooting those people. I mean, what is, what does that take? And you've said this before, you know, where the cry of a black man 
is, you know, we, we as a country are, are getting more and more, you know, immune or in, I, I'm not sure, you know, kind of closing down to hearing these yep. messages and even the news, you know, you can't hardly find anything on Jacksonville today, but if that was Columbine, if that was a situation where, so, you know, a, a, a black individual had come in and shot three white people, oh, my God, you, can you imagine the news coverage? So when people say to but me, also, well, I wonder how many, you know, white people are killed by black men every day. You know, well, excuse me, but you're going to use that, what, as a justification for this? That th we should just allow this to happen because, you know, it happens, blah, 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 blah. Well, Tim, excuse me, but that's like saying, you know, anything absurd about, well, yeah, you know, I, I, I wish that wouldn't happen. But, you know, this happens, too, to, you know, my people, French people. French people, they get discriminated against all the time. You know, I, come on. Come on, people. I don't and get it. We got to understand, and, and and yeah, we have to take away the fact, you know, let's just uh, really kill the, the kill the conversation that this was random. It was not random, you know. It was a uh, deliberate and it was targeted, just as in El Paso, Texas, when the, like you said, those uh those places where you know minorities shop or where they uh congregate or where they gather, you know, of course, like the 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 church in uh South Carolina, uh, you know, of course, that uh, gentleman he knew that that was a black church. Uh, you know, in El Paso, Texas, you know, that was going to be in a predominantly uh, Latinx or Latin uh, community, uh, just like in Buffalo, uh, you know, that tops that community, you know, and then, of course, here in Jacksonville, you know, and, and, and it's like a, in a predominantly black community. This, so it just I want to take away the fact that it, it it was not random. And then, of course, with the uh, evidence left behind in the manifestos. But again, it's like the the the. The things that are behind that way of thinking, you know, again, it's like we're talking about how people like did you uh, it, actually just on the news last night, there was um, a, a state, a state senator, a state representative senator, whatever, from the state of Georgia talking about civil war. Now, this is a, 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 a state official, a, a government employee talking about. Well, you know, if uh, they prosecute uh, him in the state of Georgia, when do I why do I have to go get my guns to get justice? And it's like justice is being served, you know, there, and it's going and then justice is a due process, yeah. you know. So but basically but this gentleman is talking about going to get guns because let's just face it, uh, a crime was caught and called out and now it's being prosecuted and it's going through the process. Yeah. You know, and and, yeah. and and that's where, again, it's like we're, we're in a space and a time where, you know, people, the very people that say, hey, oh, we're all for law and order, law and order, law and order is law and order, except when it pertains to them. And and, and this is the is it's just uh, it, it hurts because, again, this is uh, the marginalization of people. This is where right supremacy kind of reigns. And of course, what happened you know, all throughout history, what we see, you know, you criticize a thing, right? When you can't control it, you're going to criticize it. Yeah. And when the criticism does not work, what you're going to do, you're going to threaten it. Yeah, that's a don't that's, work. That's when you get physical. That's a common and we're, human. And we're seeing that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. And so I, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's just uh, we see the steps. You know, we see these things perpetuate in different parts of the country. Well, there are so many of these instances that we just don't hear about. Antoine, you know, of course, uh, we all heard of we all heard of Tulsa, and some people may have heard of Rosewood, Florida, but a lot of these things happened all across uh, Florida, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama. It's still happening in Louisiana, <laughs> yeah. and so it's just uh, we just don't hear about them. Yeah, Tulsa, Tulsa the Tulsa massacre. You know, that's a. Uh... You know, let's talk about a, a blemish on American society. That's, uh, you know, a situation where, uh, you know, l look up. I mean, sometimes people call it the Tulsa riot. Um, it, it, mm -hmm. it was, in fact, a massacre. And, you know, of such that there, the, the incident that, you know, provoked it was a black man supposedly whistling or was it whistling or just, you know, making a, a lewd comment to a white woman. And then she, you know, went forward and just saying, you know, the, this black man did this, but, but he was arrested, wasn't he? And then put in jail. He, he did the, 
if the two were in an elevator, yep. Yeah. And uh, she, uh, he was accused of something, and then of course uh, a bunch of uh, he was arrested, and then of course uh, a, a bunch of uh, white men say let's uh, go and get him and lynch him and all this and that and the other. Then the black men in the community like, no, we're not going to let this happen like this, right? You know, and so in, and then there was basically in that heated stance, right? Let's just use the analogy. Somebody dropped a pen, and yeah. regardless of what side dropped the pen, boom, there it was. Right. And then, of course, then they then they went and got planes to bomb the place and yeah. everything yeah. else. Fire incendiary yes. bombs, yeah, with biplanes. You but, know, this is how you know yes. that was not very advanced. They're hanging out the the side of a biplane and dropping, you know, small essentially grenades, you know, onto mm-hmm. houses. I mean, fires started. You can go through, uh, you know, Tulsa today and see uh, streets where there's just steps up to houses, concrete steps that led up to yep. the lawns, the front lawns, the front sidewalks of houses that burned to the ground. You know, and those have been left there. The land hasn't been sold, but left there as a testament to this thing happened. They, you know, can do ground sonar where a freeway was built, but you can still do ground sonar and find that there are bodies after bodies after bodies that are buried in a location that, I'm, you know, people had to know that that was a mass grave and yet they built an expressway over it. You know, I mean, you just, and, I can't even get my head around the fact of how, you know, awful these things are. And yet we just, we don't want to teach that. You know, we, we don't want people to know about that. And if you, t- you can't even take AP black history anymore because we don't want, we don't want white people feeling bad about, you know, things like that, that happened so far ago in, in our history. And let me tell you, folks, as a white guy, I do feel bad. I do feel bad that that stuff happens, but not because I'm a white person, because it happened to people. It happened to people, whether it's Kosovo or Israel or Palestine or Kansas or Jacksonville, Florida. This is people doing horrible things to people because they're allowing themselves to believe a lie that that other person is other than me, is different than me because their skin is black, the religion is different, they're, you know, the thing that they practice on Sunday mornings, I don't understand. It's, you know, Muslim stuff and we're a Christian country and whatever. You got, you got all kinds of reasons there that are fed to us like cornflakes to feel, you know, that, that that's somehow justified to otherize a person where you can walk in to a dollar general and just start shooting people up because you've been indoctrinated into a line of thought that says that's okay. In fact, that's not only okay, but that's your responsibility to do that, to save America. And- one uh, and man, uh, that's that was deep, brother. And one last thing about the uh, Tulsa uh, situation, of course, like uh, you know, the risk, the the numbers were greatly misrepresented. You know, of course, like uh, the uh, survivors and the descendants of the survivors all say the same thing that there were trucks of bodies taken out of there. And of course, you know, like when you talk about. Uh, how big Black Wall Street was and how long it was and then the surrounding communities. They say, oh, 300 people were, uh, it, it, they, the, the survivors and the descendants of the survivors sent truckloads of people taken, dead bodies, dead black bodies taken out of there. Yeah. So- and, but yes, uh, and just going... Uh, yeah, and so the numbers uh, are greatly misrepresented. So but multiply the, by a factor of 10, basically, if you want to know, you know, somewhere close to what the numbers were. And you can look at the population that was there before that happened. And then what you were just saying, how uh, how we were talking earlier. Yeah. And how we were saying just a second ago, how like, uh, you know, the thought process behind Jacksonville is, is is just bad. And of course, if we think about that particular culture, that white supremacist culture, and you just touched on it, how, yes, that uh, action was a manifestation of what is, but what about the other things that it so greatly affects? You know, you know, like uh, this white supremacist type of culture, it affects, uh, you know, the various oppression as far as voter suppression and oppression, right? Capitalism, sexism. A uh, class, like you said, uh, race, gender, religion, age, 
it, it, it this this that particular culture affects us in every single area of life, and we really have to get to the bottom of it. And, and it's going to be hard to do because some people are going to fight this thing till they die. And it's like they're going to go to their graves hating. And it's like, and then, of course, these same people with this hate in their hearts say they're Christian. And that's why it's so hard for people to understand Christianity to today because of the actions that are being exhibited. You know, Christ, you know, he, you know, we are to exhibit his culture and manifest his nature, which Jesus, he loved people. He forgave people and he gave. Yeah. You know, uh, we don't see a lot of that in the Christian culture today, you well, know, and, and that's where uh, it's, uh, it's getting hard. I won't. I, I hate saying this, but it, it, it's harder and harder to disciple people or it's like you have to go that much. You have to like say uh, to a new believer, you really have to hold their hand uh, that much more for them to get a full understanding of the Bible. You know, and, and before you let them go off on their own to start to try and study because you have to walk them through that much more to explain a lot of the things that are happening today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you think about and how like, it lines up with the word. Yeah. Think, think about how, um, you know, the, the people that Jesus got angry with, the people that he took issue with. <laughs> We're not the Mary Magdalene's, you know, the tax collectors, the, the you know, the, the folks that were just getting by, you know, were survive, surviving. He took issue with the people that had it all figured out. They, they were the rule book yep. makers. They were the rule yep. book interpreters. They were the ones that got to decide who was accepted yes. and who was banished and who was, you know, it, it was ostracized or corrected, you know, that that's the person, that's the mindset, that's the level of humanity that so many of us that call ourselves Christians. And I'd be one of the first ones to say that I can call myself a car and go sit in a garage that does not make me a car. So I can call myself a Christian and go to church regularly, but that does not make a person Christian. So we have right. to, you know, separate that from a Christian is a follower of Christ. A, a Christian is someone that really has looked at who Jesus was, what he did, and says, I believe that this man is on to something here. <laughs> and then, you know, you start to really analyze it and say, okay, well, he isn't just a great teacher because if this guy said what he say, says, what they say he said, um, and we've got, you know, records of what he said that are within decades of when he was alive, you know, like some, in some cases, less than 20 years, the existing fragments. So we, we have a pretty good handle on he said this, it was recorded that he said this, and this is what he said. And you have a phrase like, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. Somebody that says that, folks, you got to come to grips with the fact that that that's not just a teacher. That's either a liar, a lunatic, or who, who he says he is. So come to grips with that. And if you want to believe he's a liar, if you want to believe he's a lunatic, okay, but call it that. You know, understand that. I, I don't think he's a great teacher. And when somebody says, well, yeah, he's just one of the prophets. No, nope, I'm sorry. Can't buy that. The guy's a lunatic. That's, you know, at least you're being consistent at that point, you know, or the guy's a complete liar because nobody could say that stuff. Or you say, you know, I can understand how you believe that, but I've looked at these verses and I can't reconcile them as anything other than liar, lunatic, or who he says he is. And from my experience, my life, my walk, I have to say he is who he says he is. And, and you made a, you just, uh, you made a great point, right? When he, uh, he said, uh, who did, uh, Jesus his most scalding words against it? What? collector or the, the the people of the poor right the people of the lower life in that time but it was against the pharisees and sadducees and and, and those guys and, and and those are the very guys that like you said they called it like oh he has a he he's dangerous power be he has a demon it's like no uh exactly but also think about this and even the Bible even tells us that a lot of the sadducees and pharisees believed but they would not confess him openly but for fear of being kicked out of the synagogue mm -hmm. and so look at today you know of course uh, there's a because in the grand scheme of things there's a small group of uh people that that hate like that right but there's an even larger group that 
is against that thing, but they won't say anything for fear of being alienated themselves. I was thinking of that this morning, how and Martin Luther King, they, towards the very end, I think the night before Memphis happened, you know, mm -hmm. where he was assassinated, that he talked about mm -hmm. that he, he not only realized that there was a, a lot further to go, you know, with the road that he you know, talked about, the things, the vision that he had when he had his I dream of I dream speech, you know, and, you know, the things that he, the 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 platitudes, the vision, the aspirations that that are talked about in that speech, which is still today one of the most inspiring speeches and is quoted by people on the right and the left to say, you know, I, yeah, I align with Martin Luther King. I I believe that, you know, we're going to judge people by the context. <laughs> Content of their character. Okay, all right. So then he gets to the end of his, of his career, the end of his time on the earth, and he says he believes that w there there was a lot more work to be done. And the thing that he feared the most was that moderate America, the people you're just alluding to, moderate America, was was not energized enough to really confront and do the work, the heavy lifting. Because, you know, when you're talking about, you know, folks, when we're talking about white people feeling bad about what's happening to black people, just try to think about in terms people are doing this to other people. And why? Why do I constantly get redirected to feeling that that's somehow justifiable? And it, it's because moderate America wants to stay moderate America. And when we're talking heavy lifting, like dealing with these kinds of, of topics, it's like exercise. You know, people can say, oh man, I need to lose some weight. I need to diet some more. I need to eat better, you know, and you know, you need to do that. But you know what? Oh, oh God. Yeah. Uh, Project Runway is on. I, I, right after I get done watching Project Runway or right after I get done watching, you know, Desperate Housewives, whatever your thing is that you're really into, the show that you really like or the thing that you, the game you want to watch, you know, we, there are so many distractions that keep us from doing what we know we should do. And that's get on the, the bike or, you know, get, you know, don't stop buying Doritos at the store and start buying, you know, some apples. You know, those things are not fun, but they are the only way. You know, we can't, there are, there are people that try to sell pills and whatnot that, oh, this will turn 20 pounds of fat in one week. You know, oh, come on, come on. You know, the, the only way to get into healthy shape is to do the hard work that it takes to get there. You gotta, you gotta realize you're going to be hungry. You gotta realize you're going to hurt. You got to realize that some days you're not going to want to do it and you got to push through it anyways. That's the only way. And this is the same darn thing on a spiritual level, on an emotional level. This is America confronting all of us, confronting that this is not okay. This is not who we want to be. We do believe that all men, all people are created equal. All, all of them. So, that being our, you know, fundamental belief as a country, as Americans, as patriots, we have to do something that aligns with that. And one of them is to stand up and say, no, no more, no more killing because you're black, no more killing because you're Muslim, no more killing because you're Christian, no more killing because you're an old fart. You don't know what you're talking about, mister. So, you know, make room for the young people of the world no more no more <laughs> and that's where uh the attacks are coming again uh, again against uh, these uh this created culture war because uh people are in a space where because like let's just face it you know a lot of people in this country uh like say people of means whether they are white or black or whatever they insulate themselves with what they want and desire their lifestyle their way of life they don't have to deal with anything outside of what they don't want to deal with. And so things happen or when they are, uh, when we talk about social, racial, economic injustices, the first thing that, well, it doesn't affect me or it doesn't affect my children. It doesn't affect me because they're so deeply insulated. Like we're talking about that moderate middle of the road American. Right. And it's like, with the, it, 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 again, it's like you can no longer just stand and sit by and say, oh, well, it doesn't affect me because down the road it will. If it ain't affecting you now, it's going to affect your grandchildren. 
you know, and of course, and then with the way the things are going now, they're going to be forced to pick a side almost instead of instead of us coming together in unity and and and, and just really trying to come up with solutions. People are being because we're seeing it right now. People are being forced to pick sides. And of course, like when we talk about picking sides, right, it's like either you are uh, of uh, let's just call it out. You know, of course, white supremacy has masked itself in different forms. You know, of course, like, uh, you know, when we start talking about equity and inclusion, right, people saying, oh, my kids are being made to feel bad. No, and it, that's just the under that's just a surface argument to a deeper issue. Because, again, white supremacy goes deep. It goes deep, deep, deep. You know, and it's like when we're talking about those things like like that, it's like it's it has masked itself. You know, uh, gerrymandering. Yeah. Gerrymandering. As an example, you know, of course, that goal because it's about oppressing. It's about oppressing a specific group of people to choke them out and take away their voice. And, and so when we're talking about these things, it, it, it's designed, it, it's deliberately designed to take away the voice and even the lives of the quote unquote minorities in this country, because some people have exalted themselves and, and, and feel that they are superior or feel like this is theirs when uh, that's not the case. Yeah, it's really easy to think gerrymandering is no big deal when you're looking at a map with lines that are driven, you know, drawn very neatly. <laughs> but then when you go to those places and you look at the streets that are being delineated as the places where the line is drawn, just, you know, Google map it. Because Google map, generally, you can at least see, you know, what what streets we're talking about, what houses are on that street. Um, it, you'll You'll get a pretty good idea pretty quickly of why that street was chosen instead of the one three blocks over east or west or north or south um you know it's and 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 i'm i'm not one to sit there and say you know well republicans are bad because they did that that's been being done for a long time it's all about power like chicago, it, it, you know like when they built the uh when they built the projects uh, it, it, the history of chicago uh, when you uh really read up on it and it's like with a Mayor Daly at the time and him and uh, a bunch of other guys, they knew what was going to happen. Like you said, this thing has been in play for a really long time. Even when they before they built the projects, they knew what the intent was to do this, to devalue that land for to sell it later. Mm -hmm. So it'll, it'll go down. And, and we see that right now, 2023, everywhere that I almost everywhere that I used to know no longer exists. And another piece of wonderful court. news, the last uh, female black woman, female black, yeah, of course, a female woman. I, duh. The, <laughs> the, last, the, last, the last black woman that was the CEO of a S&P 500 corporation or S&P yeah, company uh, that was listed on it uh, resigned yesterday or the day before. So, you know, for there to just be one African-American woman you know, serving in that huge construct, that ought to tell you, too, something about fundamentally what we've talked about over and over again. It's not black and white. It's not, you know, brown skin and yellow skin. It's haves and have-nots. The haves have an agenda that they are, you know, seeking to accomplish and further. And we have to stop getting caught up in this, you know, nonsense of, you know, attacking, um, you know, the the peripheral argument or the peripheral, you know, the thing that's being set up as the issue and realize that 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 is the same as if we were fishing and, you know, we're trying to do things to get the fish to gather in a polluted place of the lake. You know, you can say, you know, oh, this is a great fishing spot. It's always been a great fishing spot. But if it's all of a sudden next to a drainage ditch for, a, you know, a company that's spewing stuff in, your great fishing spot just got turned into, uh, you know, a horrible place to fish. You know, in, in some ways, that that's kind of the way we do things. We keep on, you know, turning fertile ground like the civil rights movement into a putrid mess by coloring it in ways that make 
people Mm -hmm. not want to touch it. It's going to make me feel bad. They're trying to make, you know, it seem like I'm a racist. I'm not a racist. I, I have black friends. I, you know, whatever that, that stuff, those narratives, we've talked about that before, right? Those narratives are very Mm -hmm. carefully chosen, strategically chosen to keep us from thinking about the real issues. Yeah. Yeah. Is it okay for people to do these things to people? Dude, we're already at like, you know, 50 minutes as always, uh, you know, we, we get going yeah, just, on something. Uh, Closing you thoughts? Made, uh, uh, yeah, just uh, when we were just uh, talking there, uh, you uh, mentioned about the haves and have-nots, right? And, of course, the haves are using the have – one group of have-nots against another group of have-nots, saying that these other group of have-nots is trying to take away what you have. And, of course, this is a playbook. You know, when, when uh, Nixon started to use this playbook – remember, he was from California, but he started to – really target the people of the South saying, hey, this, that, and the other. And we see that same playbook. Because, like, you hear, uh, like, say, uh, Donald Trump, he used the word we. <laughs> He's like, he has no place in the South. He would, he, 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 if he had a choice, he, he, he lives in Mar-a-Lago, out of the way. But, again, it's like, we, we talked about this before, how, like, say, the people that are in positions of power are using other people as pawns to execute their strategy and their plan. And again, it's like when we can really reach that other group of people and say, hey, when you really get that the grand scheme of things, we are the same exact, you know, and like we say, we talked about this before, how people are voting against their own best interests because of this thing. Because again, this thing is maxed to look like something different. But that's why we're having these conversations. So uh, Let, let's think just, uh, our hearts. Yeah. When you uh, talk about the that name that you just mentioned, and we say that he represents me, he does great things for the country. And, uh, you know, I, I will, uh, people can believe that, you know, I, I look at it and think, okay, I, you know, that's from your perspective, you think that's a really good thing. But I want to challenge people. Uh, and, you know, those of you that are listening that would never vote that way, just, you know, keep establishing, keep relating, keep trying to have interactions with people that are, you know, ardent Trump supporters or are on that middle of the line where I, I can't vote for Biden, so I'll have to vote for Trump, whatever. Just think about one thing. If if he was, you know, uh, uh, wanting to be the head of the, you know, um, CIO uh, or the CF, what is it, the, the truckers union. Uh, AFL CIO, mm-hmm. right? If he mm-hmm. if he was trying to do that, or if he was trying to set himself up as a preeminent mechanic, and his, his background was as a furniture salesman, you know, or his background was as you know a, a man who you know a, a carpet salesman, you know, <laughs> a carpet beggar. <laughs> Look that one up. Um, if that was his profession, would the those organizations, AFL CIO members, would people that were machinists, mechanics, would they let that person represent them? And of course not, because that person doesn't have any understanding of what issues they deal with on a day to day basis. They may say they do, and they may be able to speak the speak. But the, you're, you're just common sense would tell you that's not the guy that needs to represent us. We need somebody that has been walking in our, our shoes, that has lived the kind of life we have to live to understand why this pay raise, why whatever is so important and necessary for us. So just look at both Biden, look at both Biden and Trump and look at their lifestyles. And please, please, please tell me. And tell yourself, how how does that person in that lifestyle understand the majority of Americans and what we deal with on a day-in, day-out basis? How? And yet we are electing them. We are forced to elect one of them to represent all of us and to make decisions for all of us. You got to think about that. You got to think about that going beyond. I've always voted Democrat. My mom and dad were Democrats. You know, I believe in the Republican agenda. He does great things for the country. You got to think beyond those narratives and think about who out there. Is there anyone? I don't even know if there is a candidate out there of 343 million people in this country. Is there a, a candidate anywhere that the vast majority of us could get behind because he's Lincoln. He's the guy that, you know, grew up in a lean to in Kentucky and he understands what it is, you know, to, to go without. He's John Boehner, Boehner, 
who, you know, grew up in a house, a small house, and, you know, kids and his family slept in the drawers of their, you know, dressers because there wasn't room and there for everybody to have their own bed. You know, where, where are those people? That we could all get behind and say, you know, this guy is a politician, but he's still, or this woman is a politician, but she still, she understands the day in, day out battles that you and I have. Let's find that person. Let's stop playing the narrative that these, you know, the multi-million dollar corporations that fund what is necessary to get, you know, on the ticket even. Um, you know, how do we change that around? That sh- that should be the core thing we talk about because we don't want to see people walking into Dollar Generals anymore and shooting folks just because they happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and they happen to be the wrong color skin from that person's perspective. And I'm not arguing gun control or any of that. You know, that those are different discussions. Guns don't kill people. People kill people. So and people kill people because they're in a mindset that tells them it's okay to kill people and that's what we're getting at that's what jacksonville should represent has to represent to all of us is that you know is it okay for a person to do that to those people because that 19 year old young man is never coming home again that 57 year old mom and i don't know grandma she's never coming home again is that okay is that okay for somebody to do that? And if it's not okay, which I believe the vast majority of us would say, no, of, of course that's not okay. And what are you and I all doing to make sure that it, it, it at least decreases? We're not going to wipe that out because the human heart is just too wicked and deceitful. And, you know, we'll, we'll hang on to the vestiges of its, you know, what I want mentality. Um, but, yeah, God, we got to start making uh... progress to that. Yep. And just uh, like just to end like with what you're just saying, let's just uh, like you said, that of course, the action of itself is not right at all. But the thought process, the motive, the intent is, you know, just think about those things. So here we've been talking again. Frame of reference coming together. I'm Raul Brush. You are young man. What is your uh, Antoine Holman senior? Uh, that's right. And I call him young man because he's about. 10 years younger than I am. So I get to say <laughs> I'm the old guy. So, but in reality, we're both old guys, right? That's just the way it is. So my friend always, always energizes me talking with you. I, I appreciate, um, I appreciate your candor. I appreciate your perspective. I, I, uh, I just, I, the more we talk, the more I value our friendship. And, uh, absolutely. And, uh, that is a uh, so mutual, uh, Raul. And, uh, again, uh, I, I just, uh, attributed our relationship to just uh me is just personal growth um, yeah. you know just uh to to really be able to talk to someone that does not necessarily we don't have to agree on everything right but it's like being willing to just being willing to hear it out and then it's like oh wow yeah i never thought of that yeah. i never saw it that way yeah. and so i i, I just I, I thank god for the relationship brother yeah, you know, just and like we keep billing ourselves. This is our brand. Is I'm just an old white guy, and you're a less old black guy. <laughs> and, That's and, it. Uh, less old. <laughs> yeah, I don't live in a place with gold seats. I live in, you know, I, I grow. In, you know, have a small house that uh, I'm trying to get painted. You know, right now that's my my goal for the rest of the summer is try to get one more wall painted on it. So I have no pretense other than I can tell you. From my perspective, this man across the screen from me, Antoine Hallman, is the real deal. Um, I hope I hope he continues to see me that way, and that I continue to be that way. The, you, know. you are, and you will, folks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being a part of the discussion. You know, please go to www.forsauk.com. Leave a comment. Leave a message. Leave an argument. Leave a perspective. Give your frame of reference to the whole thing so we can keep the dialogue going from more than, you know, more than a couple of guys' perspective. This should be a world dialogue. Um, So appreciate you listening. Appreciate you being with me, my friend. Uh, All right. Until next time. All right? Uh, Yep. Have a great one.